Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, everyone. Welcome. How's everyone doing today? Good? I'm excited to see everyone here for Empowered Youth. Um, first off, if anyone didn't get their bulletins, our ushers will be coming forward to give them to you. So welcome, welcome. My name is Brendan Ishimura. I'm Jordan's younger brother. I'm going to be a junior at Frontenac High School. I'm 16. So today I will be talking to you about the voice of God, the dedication to God, and the direction of God. So we're going to start off with direction. But first, how many of you guys like or enjoy the game of football? Okay, Dallas Cowboys fans, Denver Broncos fans, and Cleveland Brown fans, please put your hands down. Because what you guys do, I wouldn't call it football. So all the running... <laughs> that's what I'm here for, guys. Um, so running backs, quarterbacks, receivers, what were you guys taught at a very young age? You, amen. Um, <laughs> you were always taught to follow your offensive, offensive linemen, follow your bulky guys, follow your running backs, follow your uh, linemen. So if you want to move in a certain direction, you have to choose the right direction. So last year, I was a sophomore at Fronick. I was a second string running back. But you know, the, you know what they say, you're second string for a reason, right? So I thought I was better than everybody. I thought I was a hot shot. So I got to go in our first game. It was at Girard, and we called this play. It was right 42 ISO. So you know what they all say. If you say 42, you're supposed to go to the two hole, right? Amen. So, but me thinking I was better than everyone else, I went to the four hole instead. And let me tell you what happened. So the play started, right? I got the handoff. Instead of going to the two hole, I went to the four hole. And out of nowhere, boom! Got smoked by this outside linebacker. Not, not only did I lose a couple of yards, but I lost a couple of brain cells as well. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the dedication to God. So my first question for you today is, how many of you guys are truly dedicated to God? Think about that for a second. Who puts God first above everything else? And ask yourselves, how would your life be if you were truly dedicated to God? So we're going to be talking out of 1 Samuel, and we're going to talk, touch on chapter, chapter 1 today. So Samuel was born at a very young age. Well, not duh, he was born at a very young age. Sorry. Sam, I'm so sorry. Samuel, so as soon as, gosh, I apologize, guys. I'm sorry. So to start out with, Samuel, Samuel was born, and right off the bat, he was dedicated to God because his mom wanted to be in a relationship with God, and he wanted to be in the will of God. So my first thing for you today is... Don't miss what God has for you. God has a plan for everyone in this room, but some, but some people don't always choose what God wants them to do. So why is that? Because we like to do what we like to do, you know? It's our life. We like to live it. So last year, I was more worried about what I wanted to do rather than what God wanted me to do. So I was always putting my sports, my friends, my family before God, and not knowing that if I put God first, all of these other things would fall in line. I was so focused on what I wanted to do, I wasn't worried about what God wanted me to do. So my next point for you today is, well, first, we're going to flip to 1 Samuel chapter 3, and we're going to go to verses 2 through 9. And so I'm going to read this to y'all, so bear with me here. So at the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I, I did not call, lie down again. So he went, sorry, so he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. So how many times have we done that? God has called everyone in this room to do something great, but how many times have we thought it was someone else? So my first thing about this, about the voice of God today is, who, what, who do we listen to? So sometimes we might listen to our voice, and some of you might ask, what do you mean by that? Well, we like to be in control, do we not? As Christians, we like to call our own shots because we think we know what's best for us. Then again, 
who doesn't like being who doesn't like being the quarterback of the winning team throw that t- winning touchdown pass get all the fame get all the glory we always say it's our life let us live it but then again it's easier to trust ourselves rather than trust God so our next thing is we can listen to the voices of other people we might take their voices in way too much account for what they what they mean so for example we might listen to our family member our mentor a good friend and we might think their wisdom and their importance is more important than God or we go back over here we go to our negative choices where we just put their someone else's voice and we just do what they tell us to do so for example like we choose to not do something right and we choose not to do it like make the right choice but then we get peer pressured and they're like well everyone else is doing it so why are you why aren't you so we end up like oh I want to be accepted I want to be with the crowd so we end up going over here and doing it with them how many times have we done that guys how many times have we taken into someone's account way 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 too much than it rather what we should have or how many times have we listened to our own voice because we like what we want to do because we think it's the best for us to do my last thing is we should listen to God's voice we need to trust our our Creator our Heavenly Father because like I said at the beginning he has a wonderful path for everyone in this room no matter what you're going through and we have to we have to listen to his voice above others so a couple of years ago I was doing like I said I was listening to what everyone else said I always wanted to be accepted I was worried more about what people thought of me than what I what is what I, and what I should have been worrying about what God had for what what God thought of me I was worried about doing sports in school and being a high school boy I mean like girls come on boys come on don't, don't lie come on now so but now I've been called into ministry I mean not I'm not saying that everyone's path is ministry but God has a greater calling for what than you think your calling is so my challenge for you today is click <laughs> sorry so who do you really depend on think about that who do you depend on do you depend on God do you depend on yourself or you depend on other people. I mean, we are all victims of not depending on God. Well, think about how your life would be if you depended on God first and everything else second, third, fourth, fifth. How easier your life would be, your marriage would be, your finances, your family, your friends. I'm not saying what you're going through is going to disappear, but it's going to get a lot easier to go through with the voice of God. If, you're, if God's voice is the loudest the voice in your life, you won't have to worry about the other voices negatively impacting you. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Hi, guys. My name's Zach. As I'm getting set up here, if I can find my spot. Um, I'm going to be a freshman this year in college. Yay. Uh, I'm going to go, yay, I'm going to leave, uh, I actually leave in like, I think it's like 27 days now, I'm going to go to a Bible college in Wichita called Sagu, and I'll be interning at a local church there, I don't know which one yet, they'll tell me when I get there, so I don't really know yet, oh hey, I need the clicker, that's good, that's good, okay, so, before we start, I have a couple questions for you guys, so who here has ever gotten lost while driving? And men, you can put your hand down because we don't get lost, right? (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Next question for you guys. Who has ever gotten lost while driving while using a GPS? Quite a few of us in the room. Yeah. So here's my story on that one. So a couple friends and I decided we were going to go watch what would end up being Frontenac's last football game last season. And of course, we left, we left late because none of us are respons- we're not responsible enough to leave on time. So we missed the first 30, 30 minutes of the game. It's a good game, at least the first half. The second half is one of those games where the ref plays more than the players do. And so Frontenac ends up losing. Everybody's crying. I'm not, but like everybody else is. And so, <laughs> so we end up leaving. And on our way back, it's about midnight at this point. And I'm on my phone using it as a GPS. I probably shouldn't have been on my phone while I was driving, but I was. And so I'm driving, and my, my GPS is like, keep right. And so I, I'm in the left-hand lane, so I get in the right-hand lane. And then I notice that the car on the GPS isn't on the same road that I'm on, and it's like going this way, and I'm going this way. 
And so then I'm lost, and so I'm like, okay, uh, what, do I, what do I need to do? And so I just set my, GP, my GPS down, and I start driving. That was not the right thing to do. I got so lost that night. That three-and-a-half, that three-hour car ride turned into about a four-and-a-half-hour car ride. And so today what I want to talk about is how our intention doesn't determine our direction. So... I want to pick on, and I want to pick on a guy named Eli, and not Pastor Eli who's sitting right over there. It's this guy named Eli in the Bible. He's a high priest at the time, and in being that, he's part of the Levites, and they're in charge of the Ark of the Covenant. They're in charge of the people of Israel's connection to God. So he's kind of a big deal. He's pretty cool. But just like everybody else, Eli has a fatal flaw, and we see this in 1 Samuel chapter 2. His, his, his fatal flaw is his sons. So being the high priest, he has a lot of responsibilities. And in that time, people would bring meat offerings in order to um, be forgiven of their sacrifices. And so the sons, after so long, are like, we could keep some of this meat. Like, who are my meat eaters in here? Like, ribeyes, Casey strips. Like, I'm a butcher, and so, like, I just have people ask me for meat all of the time. So I know my stuff, and, like, meat is so good. And so these guys, these guys are like, we're just going to set this aside, and we're going to eat this later. And so this goes on for years. And Eli doesn't know about it, and so he's, like, eating the meat and hanging out with him. He has no idea. But God eventually comes to Eli and is like, this isn't good. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 17, we see how upsetting this is to the Lord. He says, the sin of the sons was so great in the Lord's sight because they were treating the Lord's offering with contempt. And so they do this for years, and God eventually comes to Eli, and he's like, hey, your sons need to quit doing this. This is really bad. And so Eli goes to his sons. He rebukes them. And being the, the little, no, they're not little kids, but just being the, the people that they were, they didn't care. And so they completely forget about it, and they continue doing what they're doing. Eli doesn't see the importance in what they were doing, so he doesn't change their actions again. He only talks to them about it once. And isn't that what we do? If we see something is not that important, we tend to push it off to the side. So who are my sleepers in the room, right? Who likes to sleep? So like, I had to get up super early this morning, so I went to bed pretty early. But normally I'm out pretty late. But if I haven't read my Bible for the day, and it's like midnight, and I'm starting to get tired, I am taking the L in Christ that day. I'm taking the loss. I am going to sleep. I'm going to feel, actually probably still really tired when I get up, because I'm going to have to get up in like three hours. But either way. So sometimes I prioritize my sleep over praying and over reading my Bible. So what about Netflix? Who are my Netflix people, right? Every, everybody's going to raise their hand. Come on, it's Netflix. We all have our shows, right? Like, I like The Flash. I like The Arrow. I'm watching The Arrow right now, but I finished The Flash, and so I'm doing it backwards. It's not going well. I'm really confused on a lot of areas, but that's fine. Um, what about like Grey's Anatomy? Like all the girls are going to raise their hand. A couple guys are going to raise their hand too. No? Okay. What about The Office, right? The Office? There it is, right? Everybody, yeah. So sometimes in life, we see these, small, these, these things in life that aren't bad. It's not bad to watch TV, and it's not bad to sleep. But when we start prioritizing them over Christ, they become a bigger deal than what they were. And since we don't see the importance of the action that we're doing, we don't see to change it. Eli didn't intend to disobey God and didn't intend for his sons to keep doing it, but that's what happened, and he doesn't rebuke them again. And so when we don't see the importance, we don't change, and that's when things go bad. Now, the second thing Eli does when he finds out that this is going on is he starts to grab at straws. Eli starts to play the comparison game. Eli starts to justify his actions. He justifies the fact that he only rebuked them once and didn't seek to change them too heavily. Now, I would say, you know, for Eli, one, God only mentions it once. And so he's like, well, you know, I'm close with God, and it didn't affect my relationship with God. And since I've only been talked about it once, it can't be that big of a deal. Or the fact that it's the sin of his sons. He's not committing a sin. He's not the one who's stealing the meat. He's just eating the meat. Or maybe, we don't, it doesn't even specifically say, but maybe he's not even eating the meat. So at this point, the sin is no longer on him, and so he doesn't see the importance of changing it. But isn't that something we all do? We as people 
like to justify our actions and make ourselves feel better. Maybe God's calling you to start loving people, or maybe you see a homeless man on the side of the road, and instead of helping him, you're like, oh, I'm too busy. I, like, you could be going somewhere and doing something that's good, but you're like, oh, I just don't have five minutes to talk to this person. Or maybe God's calling you to start mentoring somebody, and we're like, yeah, I don't have the 10 minutes it takes to, to text this person, or I don't have an hour for lunch, or I don't have the time to do it. Or maybe God's calling you to give more to missions, and you're like, well, the less money I have, that means I can't buy this something that I want, or my family has to go without something that we desperately need, like TV, or, you know, so you start focusing on gaining something instead of what God wants us to do. Or as a high school, or as a teenage boy, you justify watching pornography because there are quote-unquote worse things out there for you to do, and you try to make yourself feel better by comparing yourself to everybody else and saying that it isn't that bad, but it, it really is. When we start to justify our actions, we put ourselves above God, and we put ourselves above the cross. We stop listening to God. In that moment when I put my GPS down and said, I know how to get through Overland Park, even though I don't know how to get through Overland Park, you start doing U-turns in places that you shouldn't do U-turns. You start getting followed by police cars halfway hoping you get pulled over. That way you have some clue of where you are. And you start walking in a direction and down a path that you don't want to be on. We see in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 14, what this lack of direction in this path that Eli walks down means for him. It says, therefore I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of, the, of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or by offering. And so what that means is that their sins will not be forgiven and that they will not see heaven. Now for us, things are different. Christ came, Christ died, and now it's about if we choose to accept God, if we choose to listen to the voice of God and repent for our sins, then we can go to heaven. But, some, but Eli doesn't see the importance of this sin until he sees the consequences for the actions that he did. And so oftentimes in life, that's how it is. We say that we want to go somewhere with Christ. We want to go deeper in Christ. But we have these, maybe we have these little things like we're, we don't seek after God as much as we should. Or maybe we have these big sins in our lives that we start to justify and we start making ourselves feel better. That way we have a clean conscience when we really should be admitting what we're doing to Christ and seeking after him with everything that we have. As we go into this next time of worship, I'm going to ask you guys to stand. And as you guys are doing so, I challenge you guys to think about what is that, maybe that small thing that you are starting to justify. Maybe you spend too much time watching TV. Maybe you, you sleep too much. Maybe you prioritize the things that you want in life over the things God wants for you in your life. Maybe you have some big sin like I did for the longest time, hiding pornography and trying to justify your actions, trying to make it all seem like you're such a great guy, but on the inside, you know you're not. As we go, I challenge you guys to see the importance in the sin and to stop justifying what you're doing. My question is, whose voice are you listening to? Are you listening to your own voice and making everything seem okay? But are, or are you listening to God's voice and doing what you know is okay? If you guys want to bow your heads and your hearts with me,